Today we will review the Genshin Impact Stylized Shading using the Stylized series that we've been developing in the channel. We we'll also are going to talk about how to get rid of those normal artifacts that we get when we get the shadows from the lights. Please stay until the end of the video because we have top questions and answers for 3D users using Blender and other softwares as well. If this is the first time visiting my channel, my name is Pierre Schiller. I've worked as a 3D animator and VFX compositor for more than 20 years. I am also a Blender Foundation certified trainer and my job is to help artists and studios integrate Blender into their 3D pipeline workflow. Here's an overview summary for what we will be working on today. Okay, we're going to do Lisa for this character and you already know where to download her. So I want you to download her and change the folder name to Lisa and also every texture that you're seeing right now in the screen is going to get renamed with the correct name, with the correct English name because Here's these the are textures that for come what we will work Chinese in today. Name. So I want you to use this one, for example, as meme texture. So now we're going to import using the Potpourri PMX MMD importer. And after that, we're going to save the file. Please give it an appropriate name. In this case, Lisa01. That's going to be our version. Now we're going to deal with the materials because most of you have already um, written to me that you do not get the proper materials and that you get this pink material. So switch this window to the material editor and the first thing that we notice is that all of these materials um, do not have a proper identifying name for the parts in the body. So what we're going to do is to select the first material and as you can already see um, the Pauperi shading has been already assigned to this one but it cannot find the texture files and moreover we need to identify this on the material slot list. So the way we do that is by selecting the body, entering edit mode, and once you enter edit mode, you're going to see, you can also do it this way, you are going to see that all the parts that we have right here in the material list have this select button. If you click it while you have the first material selected, we're going to notice that this one corresponds to the eyes. So sure enough, let's rename that as eyes. Now let's go for the second material, click on select, that corresponds to the eyelashes. Okay, so the third part or the third material after we click select corresponds to the skin. So let's type here skin. I'm going to be doing this for all of the materials. This one corresponds to the face. So let's rename that Alt A to unselect, then click on select. And now we'll see that this corresponds to the jewel that she has. This one corresponds to the hat. Perfect. Let's continue to do the list. This one corresponds to the belt. So let's rename it as such. Let's go for the next material. This one is going to be the rope. Or the cape, rather. Next comes up the clothes. And this one corresponds to the heels. So let's rename that as well. Alt A, select this one. And if you do not see the last material, or rather this material, you may click into transparent mode and wireframe. And then we will see that this corresponds to the meme eyes. I call them the meme eyes because that's what most of people do. Okay, so let's uh, delete all of these other materials. And let's just use the node, which is the image node and we're going to correctly target in this occasion the texture that corresponds to the hair so I can see that the eyes will correspond to that let's go back to object mode and you can see the eyes are correctly textured now I'm going to assign this emission node and you're going to do that for every texture that we have I'm going to be doing this one by one so you do not get lost next one is the eyelashes again the the image node is going to be connected to an emission shader and let's target the eyelashes so we can see that the face contains the eyelashes textures so they are correctly assigned perfect that's working 
Let's go for the next material, which is a skin. And you are going to do basically the same thing. It's the skin, you can find it on cloth, on the cloth PNG that we already renamed before this face. And now let's select the face, assign the emission material, and that is working well. Perfect. Let's delete all of these other nodes. We're only going to use the hair PNG. So, as you can see, we also have one single UV map, which is good. So, select your body again. And our hair PNG was already previously selected from the material list. Connect that into an emission shader. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, nothing is uh, reacting to light, not right now. We're only worried about connecting the right textures to the right materials. So next in the list, again, is going to be the hair for the jewel part. Because I can see the jewel um, is part of the clothes, clothes that she has. Perfect. We got the jewel back. Let's go for the hat. Separate this node, delete everything else. Open up the folder and click the hat texture. Now let's go for the belt and the belt is part of the cloth PNG. So open up the image and sure enough we have it. Now let's go for the rope or rather the cape. We connect that and target the cloth again. So perfect. Uh, Mr. Schiller, why are we doing this if most of the materials uh, share the same texture? Because later on, when we when we are dealing with the dynamic shading, each material each material part is going to react different to the light. So again, we're dealing with clothes themselves. So of course, we are going to select the cloth PNG texture, and sure enough, it gets textures. Let's go for the heels. Again, we're going to connect this to an emission shader and we're going to target the cloth PNG texture because those are the heels. That's where the heels have their textures. And last but not least, the meme eyes. Now the meme eyes have transparency. And we're going to use meme face PNG. We're going to open this and now this is the first material that we're going to set up for this character. Okay, so I'm going to be working in solid i'm sorry shaded view and now we're going to check if everything corresponds eyelashes are connected um, to the texture the neck and the chest the face the hair is going to be connected to the hair png the necklace of course it's on the hair the hat corresponds with the hat texture the belt with the cloth, the robe with the cloth, the chest with the cloth, clothes, of course, with cloth, and so on and so forth. You can compare this list one by one. You can put pause. If you've come all the way to this point in the video, thank you very much for following me. I would appreciate it if you click on the subscribe button because I'm going to be bringing you more materials, more interesting materials, including the stylized anime eyes material shaders. You do not want to miss that. So we can see that we have the vertex groups assigned, which are the bones that can drive our character, but we're more interested in the shape keys, okay? So let's rename the shape keys, because these also have um, international characters, Chinese characters, we do not know what they do so let's uh, test each one in this case we have the eye blink but when we go here we see the same blinking going on so we must assume that the first one are happy blinks so let's rename them as such and i'm going to place dot l and this one is going to be i blink happy dot r okay so this one is the regular eye blink so let's use that, iBlink.L, then iBlink.R. Perfect. So now we know and we can identify what they do. So as you can see right now, this is the meme face flat or the meme eyes flat.
that's how, that's how I'm going to be renaming this one. So we need to address this and let's create the first shader for this one. So you're going to connect the alpha into the factor, the emission into the first slot. And now we're going to add a transparent node, which is going to be connected last. And now you can connect the transparent onto the last shading. You can also press Alt S to invert the node while you have mixed shader selected. And what we need to do is to drive the color, the proper color into the emission as you can see. So now whenever we turn this up to one, we are going to get the correct transparent meme face or the meme eyes rather. Okay, the next one we're going to rename as eyes blink as she was thinking or thoughts eye blink thoughts perfect let's go for the next um, shape and you can already see that the meme faces are already working great so this is another meme face we're going to uh, um, we're going to type meme eyes um, like such cross x this one is surprise so we can Type this eyes surprise. The next one is kind of a suspicious thing or you can rename this however you want. This one is going to be eyes sharp because it looks like she's being, uh, she's analyzing something. Like, hmm, is this like so? Okay, another meme face. This one is good. So meme eyes shocked. So that's what they are. Perfect. Let's go for the next one, and this one is uh, eyes contract pupil. Let's go for the next one. These are eyes blank pupil. All right, so let's test this one, and now let's go for the next for, um, shape key. We can see that these were already renamed for us in the model. That's consider it. Look how different she looks when the shapes interact with the, with the corners of her eyes. And now we're going to work with the eyebrows. So we're going to name this as such. Let's rename this one eyebrows sad. The next one is going to be uh, raising up the eyebrows. So eyebrows raised looks like appropriate name for it eyebrows surprise eyebrows lowered and again here we have a couple of English names so that's much appreciated that's good Let, let's go for the next one now we're going to be working with the mouth this is what they call the v-sims uh, I'm sorry <laughs> This is a mouth blend shapes. Um, this is mouth A. Let's go for mouth D E, an L. Probably you would want to use this for each of those uh, phonemes. I don't know why they call them V sims. If they are called phonemes anywhere else in the planet, but let's just go with the with the flow. So this is for mouth E R Z. Probably you would need this on some other phonem. This one looks like an O or a big A-M. Let's rename this appropriately. Let's go for this one. This one totally looks like an L. That works. Or rather, <laughs> very wide open. And frozen teeth. This one is a green smile. This is an uwu. This one is going to be a smile uh, left. Smirk, rather. And this other is going to be another green smile. This one is just a regular smile. This one has a tongue. This one sticks the tongue out in the front. This one is going to be a frown 
This one is going to be a mouth long. This one is going to be a mouth short. And we can see the, the, the blush. So we got them all now. They are all working. Perfect. Now let's go for the next step. Select your model. And now we're going to build the physics. So as you can see, there is a button here which will build the physics. So if you click on that one, you can see in the outliner just seconds ago that all of these elements, invisible elements, are there to create the physics uh, collisions for us. So every PMD model, uh, it's most likely that it will have build physics. Now we're going to select the skeleton, or rather the armature, and we're going to deal with the VMD. So click on motion, import, target a VMD file, and then you can see your character animation move. So we activated the physics first, and later on we activated or uploaded or targeted a VMD file. You can find the VMD file here in the video description that I use for this model. And the way her chest is bouncing too much, it's because of it animation is snapping you can see that i'm starting on frame number six which is after the t pose and she proceeds to walk from six to 35. now i'm going to be baking the physics so that we can play back anytime at any moment so please follow the procedures that i'm showing you here in the video i'm going to change the unit scale like i've shown in my other previous video and now I'm going to be uh, taking a look here to the rigid body world, which is where we find the bake buttons. A lot of people uh, wrote to me about this. Where is the bake button in 2.9, in Blender 2.9? As you can see, if you click bake all dynamics, you will see that green bar going up, which is baking all of my frames so that we can play it back in the viewport. That way we have um, some sort of cache. Now, as you can see, that her chest is jumping around, and that is because the frame skipping from 36 to 6 is just too much. So the leg raises up uh, quicker, and therefore her chest is bouncing a lot. You, you do not see that effect apply into her um, hat, nor her hair, which should be pronounced, but it isn't. So I uh, deleted the bake, and now I'm rebaking it so finally we get to the stylized shading part thank you very much for um, being here and let's go and let's get into this so the first thing we want to do is to create a physical light reaction or rather a physical light calculation user using the diffuse shader we're going to connect this into a shader to RGB and that shader to RGB, which is a converter for your uh, units or rather your lights, um, we're going to pass it through a color ramp. So connect that into a color ramp and I want you to define three bands, okay, in the color shading. So this will give us our basic start. And as you can see, the viewport is uh, denoising at the moment and also we have an ambient occlusion um, bothering our stylized way so let's click off ambient occlusion we do not need it for this we don't ever need it for dynamic shading and unless you're, you know how to use it of course but most of the time we do not need that so let's switch that um, light into a sunlight and as you can see we are now working on final render mode here in the viewport so we can Exactly know what's going on with the light so the next step that I want you to take is to um, duplicate that same node okay and we're going to connect that into a mix RGB node using a multiply node and I'm going to press shift P and this will give me the frame that you're seeing right here I'm going to press F9 and I'm going to proceed to give it its color now I'm going to I'm going to select all of these three nodes shift P F9 and now I can change the color and the property and for everyone that has been following the stylized Guilty Gear shader series you know that all of the physical light reactions are coded in blue color so now we're going to connect that as a factor and now I'm going to press alt s to um, create this um, RGB mix into 
add mode. Why? Because we need to see that our base skin is the light color and the top skin is going to be our multiply. Uh, I'm sorry, it's backwards. The shadow is going to be the base, which is connected at color uh, at the first slot color and the light skin is going to be connected at the last color slot. Okay, so we see this shadow artifacts that we were earlier speaking about and I also want you to please change the color management from Filmic to standard RGB. This will give you more saturated, saturated colors as intended. Now select the light, change the strength, and you will see how much light it will propagate through the model. Okay, so I want you to find a sweet spot. I'm going to leave mine as three or probably two. And then I'm going to switch the light direction. And as you can see, the light is hitting the face in a different angle. So the light kind of breaks the, the idea of the regular stylized look that it will have from the light. So you can also manipulate the light angle. I'm going to use mine at 45 and you can see the results are different here. So intensity versus light angle can give you very different results. And now we're going to um, cover, really quickly cover, why do we get artifacts? As you can see, the first thing is because we are working with a uh, triangle faceted face, okay? And also, we're going to deal with the shadows because the first time that you use the lights, a shadow cache is created because we're using screen effects. Please do not forget that EV works in um, uh, using screen uh, space effects. So as you can see, I'm rolling the, the light very slow and you can see the light slides into those uh, vertices and those triangles. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the edit mode and in edit mode, I'm going to press F3 and then trees two quads that's the first command so now you can see that all of our shading it's correctly uh, distributed along her face now i'm going to add a subdivision surface which will proceed along to continually subdivide her face even more and then we can see that this is getting kind of a smooth right so now i'm going to activate the viewport display so you can see that smoothness on her face is starting to roll in and also for the rest of the body. Mr. Schiller, um, I switched from trees to quads and now I am seeing a much better improvement on my shading. Yes, but we can refine it even better. So go to the physical light reaction on your diffuse shader, which was connected to the shader to RGB. And now we're going to um, delete the first black band because I only wanted to show you how it would look if we would have a three-tone um, threshold. This is called D threshold. This blue uh, square, this blue frame that we have these three nodes in, it's recognized as a threshold. So now I'm going to lower down that white into somewhat gray because I don't, I don't want my light to be burning my textures. So that's why I'm lowering it down to somewhat a gray. So it looks good. Now let's go back into that subdivision modifier that we early applied. And if you come down here, you're going to find in the advanced tab, use custom normals. And this will continue to refine even more of what the original model brought its normals from. Okay, so if you uncheck it, you can see this, it's imperfect. This is an imperfection. If you click on that, it's going to rely on much quality normals. So therefore you can uh, see your model, it's fantastically uh, shaded. Okay, this is a, an important thing to notice. This is a, uh, an adaptive 3D model. This is not the, the exact 3D model that the game is using. Please do not forget that. So we are adapting this as we go here in Blender because we are interested in having that kind of look here in Blender and I'm showing you where to tackle the most common problems with shading, okay? Those, are, those were normal problems with shading and also with the subdivision surface modifier. 
So next thing, we're going to go into the neck and dress, neck and chest, I'm sorry, which is also skin. Again, shift P is going to give me this, then F9. Then I'm going to change the color just so you can identify what you are connected into what. And again, we replicate the work that we already did on the previous, um, on the previous shader, which was the face. And sure enough, we get enough of the same result. We can see some different banding here. It doesn't matter because as long as we get the shading on the proper uh, surroundings by the cloths, by the neck, by the chest, we are good to go. So if you move the lights, you will notice that this needs a better um, kind of dispersion and threshold. So let's move this into a tree band and also let's make sure that this is correctly shaded. As you can see, the benefit of, of having different shader levels with different thresholds will help your model sustain together with the same light. But it's better to do it this way so that you can get different variations on the threshold shadow. So now what we're going to do is not duplicate the texture itself, but we are going to use a node which is called a rerouter node and we're going to connect the first pass directly into color one and then the second one being multiplied by a purple color on color two okay so that let's go for the heels you can put pause on the video go back and check it out so now we're going to copy all of those nodes and that it's going to be mixed into a mix rgb node set to add and please um, notice that all of this is connected into an emission shader. So far we're doing so good. Let's go for the next material. This one is for the chest and gloves. So again, you can delete all of that because we already copied from the cloth. Okay, the cloth texture. It's already set up this way. We're not going to move anything else. So let's go for the robe or rather the cape, however you want to call that. And sure enough, it's connected now. And everything that has to do with cloth, we're going to use the exact same setup. So now they are all reacting to the physical light direction. That is good. We're going to connect all of this. And we're also going to adjust this one because it corresponds to the skin. Now I'm going to be using a um, darker tone for the threshold. And also I'm going to vary the multiply color here on the purple um, RGB slot. Let's go, and this is the legs and arms. Let's go and change this to add as we had it before. So I think it's working there. Okay, please take notice on how this is connected. You can put pause on this and it should be working just fine. Look at that coming along just well and this one I uh, prefer to have a darker threshold on the left side of the gradient so that I can um, emphasize the shadow on her arms as you can see this is a pre personal preference you can do it your own way and that's why I'm showing you how now let's play this back and sure enough the animation is playing awesome but now we need to deal with the hair, the hair highlights and then also other parts that will receive light. You can even customize the hair as we will see in just a second. I'm going to give you the option to use its own texture and also your own color. So this is going to be a two part, 20 minute rather. We're going to use a separate RGB because the idea here, just like I've explained on the stylized um, Guilty Gear series, you want to isolate the elements that you have on the textures. And for this, we're going to be using her same texture, but we're going to be adjusting the red channel because the red channel is going to give me the shadow or rather the occlusion for the hair. So I'm going to press Shift F, I'm sorry, um, Shift P. This is going to be renamed as Shadow Threshold. I'm going to be using a red color to identify this is from the red channel. Now I'm going to connect the green channel into another color ramp. I'm going to uh, Control Shift click on this so I can isolate the view. And then I'm going to go into the blue channel. And as you can see, there's not much contrast. 
So the highlights are better given from the contrast I get on the green channel. So let me readjust this and the idea here is to isolate the highlights from the same uh, texture that they gave us. Okay, so we have them right there. I'm going to leave them there because they are isolated now. Shift P, F9, green color, and this is going to be called highlights. Okay, so that I remember, this is coming from the green channel. Okay, so now I'm going to add a second color ramp. Mr. Chiller, why did not did you adjust it before? Because whenever you isolate something, you need a, a post process to continue further adjusting. Imagine if you had to come back to every uh, primary um, threshold selection, or rather uh, ramp, color ramp, it will become a really, a real mess. So now with that, we have correctly separated the threshold for the highlights and also for the shadows. Let's start combining. And the first node that we're going to be working in here right now is to uh, copy from our previous shader, the physical light or threshold. So we're going to be using a math node set to greater than because this region right here is going to receive light and when it's less than or greater than in this case, it's going to continue propagating that shadow. So let's go for the shadow and in the case that shadow or rather our threshold is greater than the light um, propagation, it's going to take either of those. So the greater than node has a threshold even named after such and a value. So the value is receiving the original hair shadow and then the threshold obviously is going to be our physical light aka our threshold, the blue box, the blue frame. And you can put pause on the video, connect it as such, and you will see this result. If you click on clamp, this is very important, if you click on clamp, you will make sure that no number will add up and continue to surpass that threshold, but instead they are capped, they are uh, stopped. Okay, so that's what clamp does. So now let's um, work with the threshold first. I want to know where is the sweet spot to stop the light. So therefore, I'm going to be moving or manipulating my hair threshold. And I'm going to leave it only at two colors, black and white. And please notice that this ramp shader is set to constant. Okay, there's no interpolation between it. Uh, there's no gray area. It's just a pure black and white. Now let's experiment with another mix RGB shader. And now we're going to connect the original diffuse, the original diffuse texture with the uh, mix RGB, set to add, and from there on we can see the difference. Now we have already identified our highlights. That's what we're testing, and you can also test uh, how the shadows were reacting. You can click on Alt S to change the order of the operators or the input slots that we have right here, Alt S, will allow you to switch automatically from this node onwards. Now, it's now time to combine the shadow plus the highlight. So let's add another, let's add another mix to RGB, set to add, factor in to one, and now we can see that if we want this to work, we need to delete all of these um, highlights from the original hair texture. So I'm going to create an alternative, a second version of it without any highlights, all right? So do that, clean it up on Photoshop or Krita, and then save it. Now I'm going to rename this one hair specular, and this one I'm going to be named naming this hair no specular, which is the texture that we just cleaned up. Okay, this is important because you do not want to have a highlight over a highlight. We need to have some sort of base color from the hair without the highlights, and that's what we're doing. So I'm connecting this like this. Please notice that now this is set to greater than this node. And of course, we have cleaned the highlights, and I'm going to show you how you can have your own colors here. So if you have a mix to RGB node, 
and color 2 is a result of the threshold and the shadow threshold, you will notice that color 1 will correspond to the color of the hair. If you connect greater than into the factor, but then the hair to no specular into the color number 2, you will get an appropriate color for the hair. And thus, this will allow you to change the color of the hair directly and the shadows will automatically follow. Why? Because we already created the shadow threshold before. So this is very good if you want to apply this to your own models. You should define or rather um, have a texture that will define the limits to your hair shadow. Okay, so I'm using hair, no specular. Please, please, please take notice on how the tree is connected here. Now, what happens if we use less than? It, it basically is going to invert the operation. So, if you switch the lights like this, you're going to see that this is giving you um, an opposite result. But we want to use this on greater than so that the light from the shadow threshold can be manipulated from this slider on this color node ramp. Okay, you can see that, so you can give it a lot more shadow and it will stop when your um, light threshold hits the light. Okay, so you can Alt S to test an inverted result using, using greater than and in this way we can see that all of these nodes up here control the shadow. Now let's work with the highlights. I'm going to add another matte node set to greater than, just like we did before, but I'm going to take my threshold now and then I'm going to connect it into the value. And as you can see, the greater than node, like I mentioned before, has a value slot and has a threshold slot. So then I'm going to act, add a mix RGB node. It's going to be set on mix and now I'm going to set it to add, okay? And this one, it's also, um, Ctrl shift click, you can see the results. And now I'm going to switch it to less than so I can get the highlights only. Okay, we're working with the highlights. And now we want to tint the highlights, so we're going to do the same operation there. And sorry, um, let me connect this into factor so now we can appropriately get the color on the highlights and the factor is going to determine where they are going to stop. Now I'm going to add those two with a mix RGB set to add. You can put pause on the video. I'm trying to uh, uh, run and gun on this one so that we can do this uh, faster because I know the video is long. So let's go and change the lights. It's working fantastically. Look at that. This is how most of the anime styles have the highlights. You know, the highlights are still working over the shadow area. But if you come up to this point, congratulations, you're mostly done. You're already done, rather. If you like this way, your model is already done. But I'm going to go into a step further because I want my shadows to trim the highlights. That's a personal preference. If you already have it up to this point, then please be content because you're already done. But if you're like me um, and you want your shadows to trim your highlights, then you can arrange your notes in this way. So first of all, I'm going to be deleting this one and then I'm going to be left behind with the Mix RGB Add node. I am adding, still adding the shadows and the highlights. So you can put pause again, and as you can see, the highlights are reacting correctly, but now I need to work with the shadows. So let me switch this back into a much um, corresponding hair color with, with our model. And here I'm trying different light angles. And most of all, what you need to do here is to set this to less than, and then I'm going to get the inverted effect, just like we saw before. And you can see that the Genshin Impact, as, as, this, is, as this red square shows, has three bandings for the hair. But I'm going to be working only with two for this occasion. And then I'm going to be switching the uh, threshold for the hair. So now we can see that we have a shadow area much bigger than before But this is good because what we intend to do is that we're going to use this shadow region to trim our highlights So let's put this back into context by using an appropriate color for the hair and we already know that we need to switch the um, the input slots for color 1 and color 2 
So I'm using this into a mix RGB node set to multiply by the way, connecting it in this way. Okay, so I can see that it's inverted. And finally, this should be working. So the darker color is the original color and I'm sorry, the highlight color is the original color now. And mostly we are done. All right, it's working. So the shadows stream the highlights and whenever the light hits the um, lighter part of the hair, we also get a highlight. And you can also notice here, you just saw a picture before, where the threshold of the cloth um, also moves. So we already deal with that. And you can see that cloth threshold is correctly set. Okay, it's got its own shadows plus the threshold shadow that we get from the light. This is important because whenever you deal with different shaders that are using the same texture, but you use a different light threshold, you can get different results, different stylized results, because you probably want the shadow to be longer on the cloth, but shorter on the hair. And maybe that's a personal preference that you would have. And then you go and switch it from the blue frame that we have right here and the physical light reaction, AKA light threshold. So that's that and we have everything there. So now let's deal with the buggy part where most people have already written to me a lot and they say, uh, Mr. Schiller, I cannot deal with this kind of artifacts that we get in these shadows um, from Eevee. What can we do if we model like this? Our model is not uh, accurate. What is going on? So let me tell you what is going on. I'm going to zoom into this specific area of the hair. So now you know, you already know that the, the, this uh, polygon is composed of two triangles, right? But this triangle could have the light angle uh, being received in certain way. So when you have a box, Blender needs to calculate where is the light uh, coming from. And once it detects where it's coming from, depending on the angle that you have modeled your polygon, it's going to distribute that light. So let me do this as a drawing right here. And you can notice that if I switch the light angle, the distributing on the polygon is also going to change, leaving some spaces with this kind of artifacts. And the way you fix that is by um, arranging a good number for the light angle and the shadow all right so let me just delete that for just a second delete the annotation tools and now you are still going to get artifacts but not all that much if you tweak the light and also you tweak the shadows now this is very noticeable in every game that i've seen every stylized game like this one for example and this should not be um, a problem for you now that you know how to deal with it. So first step, subdivisions. Second step, uh, fixing normals. Third step, fixing the light angle. Fourth step, fixing the shadow box area. And obviously fifth uh, state would be to check out on your geometry. By the way, I want to thank these wonderful Patreons who support the channel. They will be receiving part 3 and 4 for the Blender to Snapchat AR training series. If you are interested in what I publish on Patreon, you can follow me there. And who knows, maybe you can consider supporting all of the cool projects I post into that social network. Another way of supporting this channel is by leaving your comments in the comment section below for all of the videos that you really like and appreciate. I appreciate it very much as well. I will be opening this new section which is called Advanced or 3D and VFX Advanced Animation Questions. So every question you got, you think it's too difficult to answer in any of the other forums, you can come here and ask everything about it because I try to serve you as best as I can. So if you got questions, you can type them in the comment section below and I'll be picking up the best ones for the next video. So remember, no difficult or technical questions goes unanswered or left behind. 
Another advanced user asks the following question. Let's say I film real actors on a green screen and put them into this 3D model. The plan is to import them as EXR file sequence into Blender for scene layout. Then I'll put the render frames with that AOVs or ABC files into Nuke for compositing. So early this week, we talked about how we could do motion tracking for the scene that he was interested in. And as you can see here, we have the trackers ready. And we went all over through the tracking interface because I've noticed that there are a lot of uh, tutorials about tracking, but they don't really know how to address some of the parameters that they have there uh, for stabilizing, for, for, for optical flow, and many other terms that really come down from using the other available 3D tracking software such as Shuet, PF Track, or even Mocha Pro. And there are even more other tracking softwares like Buju that long time ago, even Match Mover from Autodesk, that really made an impact in tracking. So you really know how to address all of these parameters. And what we did here in Blender was to adapt all of those concepts so that the person that was interested in rather keyframing her and rather chroma keying her, then she would later be integrated into this virtual room of course not a, none of the materials or the shaders were work at the time he was only interested on how the correct workflow is to be approached here in blender so if you're interested in uh doing some more um motion tracking and of course how how we deal with all of this data what parameters you need to manage then please give me a shout out down here in the comment section below and i'm really interested personally in doing this using your phone, your current phone video, okay? Your video uh, that is recorded with your phone, uh, either for a selfie or anything, you can use Blender to track yourself or track anything in the world as long as you know certain parameters and I'm willing to show you how to do that if you uh, leave me your opinions down here in the comment section below. Another 3D user asks, I like to create environments for ideas that come into my mind. I'm also a 3D printer uh, prop developer, and I just want to create my own film animation as I had this as a goal in 2012. But I want to be the best environment designer in 3D that I can be. So thank you very much for this question. This is a very important one. So to become a better 3D artist, in my humble opinion, you need to work on your photography skills a lot. You also need to have good references. You need to understand camera, light, depth, and shapes. I would say that ArtStation has some amazing concept artists that have online classes available. You can check which ones you like. But if you're printing miniatures for your 3D environments photography, then you need to define what areas specifically you'll be giving service into the film industry. Last, 3D films take time. Client or self project, it's going to take up to 9 or more months at the very least. Make sure you have another money income source or you'll drain your savings. There's no way around making a quick film animation. No magic formula. Just scheduling production into a calendar and a high commitment to get it done. Not perfect, done. You can produce a short one minute pilot animation that will get your idea across and start entering pitching festivals where they will award you money to produce the short movie. Another very important notice is that the community tab still works in our channel. It was uh, previously announced in YouTube that the community tab was going to disappear. I don't know, probably it's around the end of this month. But I want you to know that I always post uh, good and meaningful content and also insights. For example, this question that I am addressing directly to the Guilty Gear Strive developers. Okay, so if you want to read more about that, you can visit the community page and get more insights about what I am doing at the moment. This is my most um, lively uh, updates that you can get from and also from my socials. I hope you've enjoyed this free one hour video training. Try Blender. Blender is powerful and beyond industry compatible. See you in the next video.